Light travels at three times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second in a vacuum. This is a piece of information which is a fixed number. It is on the information sheet and it is always going to be the same. Take sunlight, therefore about 8 minutes to reach the Earth because of the distance. Starlight can take years to reach the Earth. Now there's something called a light year and that is the distance that light travels in one year. So let's try and work that out quickly. We know that um, a year has got how many seconds in it? So we've got 365 days. Those 365 days each have 24 hours in them. Those 24 hours each have 60 minutes in them. And those 60 minutes each have 60 seconds in them. So that means that we have got 315360000 seconds in a year. And if we are traveling that many meters per second, we can say that we are going to multiply that by 3 times 10 to the power of 8. And what you land up with is 9,5 times 10 to the power of 15 meters. In kilometers, that's 9,5 times 10 to the power of 12 kilometers. So that is a million, million kilometers. What's important is that a light year is not a time period. It is a distance that you could be asked to work out. We now need to look at how our eye works and also it links into how a camera works as well. So what happens is we've got this object. Light rays come off all over this object, but we'll just take two of the rays. As they get to the lens on your eye, which is a convex lens, they are brought inwards and you land up with an image being formed on the retina of the eye. The retina of the eye then has an optic nerve which takes the image to your brain. The eyeball has, is filled with vitreous fluid and that vitreous fluid is going to allow the light to travel at the right speed and all of that sort of thing. The lens of a camera is exactly the same and you'd have a film or a pixel collecting piece of data at the back and you have, with an eye, the iris can make the pupil bigger and smaller. There's something called an aperture which will let light into a camera. So an eye and a camera are actually very similar to one another. Um, and in front of an eye, there's this thing called a pupil. And that's what happens in an eye, is that at least in a camera, there is a little aperture to let light in, and the shutter opens and closes in order for that to move about. The human eye has a converging lens and it always creates a real inverted and diminished image. Thankfully it's diminished, otherwise we'd have to have very big eyes on our retina. We then perceive it as being the correct size, but that's the work our brain does, not the work that our eye does. Our eye makes a very small picture at the back over there. The light is focused by changing the focal length of the lens and the way that is done is it uses these little um, muscles over here to stretch this lens to be more or less convex. The cornea is this um, layer on the outside of the eye in front of the lens. As I said, the eye and the camera are very similar. Light comes in through an aperture or a pupil. The size of the pupil is controlled by the iris. In the camera, it's controlled by something called the diaphragm. The focusing, in a camera the lens moves backwards and forwards whilst in the eye the lens is able to sh change shape and the image goes onto a film or nowadays if it's digital it will go onto a pixel collecting um, medium and it just collects data and in the eye it's projected onto the retina. Problems with the eyes, you can have long sightedness, you can have short sightedness, you can have astigmatism, we'll look at them all. People with long sightedness can see distant objects, but they have difficulty seeing things that are close by. Long sightedness occurs when a person's eyeball is too short and um, the light enters and it gets focused behind the retina instead of on the retina. So this is what a normal eye looks like. In it comes and the light rays get to be focused right over there. If this eyeball is too short, then the light rays focus over there. So how can we bring them together sooner? We can use a convex lens and that will 
push those light rays closer together earlier. And that is how we are going to fix long-sightedness. Short-sightedness means that the person's got an eyeball that's too long, and so the focus comes in too soon over there. What, do, what can we do to make the, spread these two rays further apart at the beginning? Is we can use a concave lens, a diverging lens. So short-sightedness is when a person can see close objects clearly but can't see things in the distance. And that is caused by a long eyeball, and that makes the light rays focus too far in front of the retina or the back of the eye, and that the way that we fix that is by using a concave lens lens. So interestingly short-sightedness is because we've got a long eyeball. White long-sightedness is as a result of a short eyeball and the length that's short or long is this from the lens to the back of the retina. Then there's something called astigmatism and that is an eye condition with blurred vision always. So it, it stuffs up the short things close and far the front surface or the cornea of the person's eye is not curved properly. It's a funny shape and normally parts of it are flattened that some of them don't curve properly. And what that does is it actually does not allow the light to focus correctly. It distorts every single image. So astigmatism gets corrected using some little prisms inside glasses in order to try and correct for that problem over there. You don't need to know the different types of astigmatism, hyperopic and myopic astigmatism. You just need to know that astigmatism is as a result of the cornea being the wrong shape. Other uses of lenses, that we can use them in magnifying glasses. A converging lens with an object between F and the lens gives you an enlarged virtual image. And that's how magnifying glass works. Projector, I've got a converging lens. The object is just beyond F and I get an enlarged real image that can be projected on the screen and it's much bigger. A compound microscope, I use two converging lenses and the objective forms an enlarged real image and then the, um, which becomes the object for the ocular and the ocular forms a virtual enlarged image. And an astronomical telescope, two lenses which are moved further and closer apart from one another to magnify things. South Africa has one of the biggest telescopes in the world. That is called, the I think it's called the South African Large Telescope, and that's called SALT. And it is in Sutherland, in, this, in the Karoo. And the reason they put it there is because there's very little cloud cover. Um, it's an area that doesn't get a lot of rain, A. Eh? B, there's very little human activity there, so there's not things that will interfere with the telescope in any way. And there's a, a minimum of light pollution. It is an astronomical observatory. It's one of the best in the whole wide world. It's the largest in the southern hemisphere. They're now also out there using radio telescopes, and that's going to be the SKA, which is going to be an even further astronomical um, example. We may look um, at doing a bit of research on salt.